Hello everybody, my name is Ikenna from Smiling Sun. Everything solar installation, everything in Vata installation, everything going green. Hope you guys are super cool today. All right, you're welcome. I'm not sure it's gonna be a bad idea if I put the MPPT and the PWM charge controller head to head. I'm thinking that it would be a very good idea if we had a mix of practicals. So let's put the argument to test if there's any. Because <laughs> every single data research or theory that you can lay your hands on pretty much backs up the fact that an MPPT charge controller should do a whole lot better than a PWM charge controller. That's why it's pretty much referred to as a current converter. So all the facts that you have pretty much gives it that thumbs up that it's going to do a whole lot better. But for one second, let's forget everything that we know. We're about to see for ourselves live on the practicals when these two charge controllers are subjected to the same environment, same condition, same amount of solar panel, same environment. What are they going to do in terms of energy conversion from the sun? All right, so that's what we're trying to find out right now. When we put the two of them head to head, is there going to be upset? Is the underdog coming out of the woods to upset <laughs> the established one? All right, so to be able to make this happen, this is what we've provided for you, okay? So right here is a Jinko 465 watt solar panel. It's pretty the tall one, it's a half cut cell. All right, so let's look at the label. All right, so it's 465 watt solar panel. And um, as you can see, guys, we have exactly four pieces of this solar panel. So two of the solar panel is gonna be assigned to the MPPT charge controller, while two of the remaining solar panel is gonna be assigned to the PWM charge controller. All right, so we're gonna connect the two of them same way. And we're definitely gonna see what the difference is gonna be in terms of energy conversion as it happens. But that's not all. Come on, guys. We have these skeletal frames, all right? So this skeletal frame is going to ensure that we have the right direction from the sun. So you can see how it's bent towards the sun. So this is gonna give us uh, the right angle where we can have best, the best of energy from the sun, given the uh, space that we have here. So we're gonna be laying the solar panels right here on each of this frame. So we have four, that's why we have four of the skeletal frames. All right, so we're gonna be using this, but that's still not all. We have the test base here, guys. So right here in the test base, we have the guys that are gonna be competing in the bout today, okay? So right here, we have a brand new MOS MPPT charge controller. It's a 60 amps, okay? And it's gonna be competing head to head with the PWM charge controller. It's also a 60 amps charge controller. All right, so each of them are assigned to a watt meter. Okay, so this is a 150 amps watt meter. So this one is gonna be connected to the PWM and this particular one is gonna be connected to the MOS. And the reason is that we wanna be reading um, the energy coming in into this charge controllers real time as it happens, guys. Okay, so uh, we have an equal opportunity for them to be able to outclass each other. And of course, we have the clamp meter we're gonna be using to clamp to see the amps that is flowing into the batteries. And of course, these are the batteries we're gonna be using, guys. All right, so here are the batteries. So each of the batteries is gonna be assigned to each of the charge controllers. So right here, this one is gonna be assigned to the PWM, while this particular one is gonna be assigned to the MPPT charge controller as we roll. The essence of having two separate batteries is that we don't want any form of interference. Sometimes when you have both charge controllers connected to one battery, you would witness interference. Uh, the very superior one could find a way to outmuscle the other one and stop it from charging completely. All right, so that's why we have two. And this battery has been drained down completely to ensure that we have free flow of energy. Because when the battery is getting nearly filled, it begins to form some form of resistance, which we do not need today. So everything is set, guys. Are you ready? If you haven't subscribed, we've given you every reason for you to subscribe, all right? And don't forget the fact that the more you subscribe, the more we can reach out to more people who also need this information. And don't forget, the moment you subscribe, you'll be the very first to be notified once we have fresh and brand new videos. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and do not forget to like. We are ready for this output test. Are you ready to find out what's gonna happen? Are you ready? You definitely have to stick around. I'll be right back.
All right, everybody, the stage is set, okay? So everything is fine. All right, so we're about to start this test. So what do you think? Which is gonna do a whole lot better? It's the boxing ring between the PWM and the MPPT charge controller. Which are you gonna have your money on? <laughs> All right, let me let you guys know what configuration we are going with. Each of the solar panel is connected in parallel. So since it's a 12 volts battery, it's definitely a 12 volt system. So to be able to maximize the current, we've decided to connect um, the solar panels in parallel. So these two is connected in parallel, while these two is also connected in parallel, okay? So that's how it's going to be. So let's find out right now what the energy level is coming into the solar panels, right into the charge controllers, and finally, last bus stop, the battery. Batteries. Let's check it out. PWM charge controller is giving us 210 watt, while the MPPT charge controller is giving us 526 watts. The PWM is giving us 210 watt, while the MPPT charge controller remains at 525 watt. <laughs> Wow, this is crazily an intimidating lead going on here from the MPPT giving it out to the PWM. 15.2 amps is the amperage going into the battery from the PWM. All right, so the PWM is delivering 15.2 amps. The MPPT charge controller is delivering 35 amps. All right, so guys, we're moving quickly to the next phase of the output test. And what we're gonna do basically here is to switch the solar panels. You already know that two of the solar panels are assigned to each of the charge controllers. So this particular two here is assigned to the PWM. So we're gonna switch the wires from behind the solar panels so that we can have the two solar panels that were assigned to the PWM you know, assigned to the MPPT charge controller, then we move the one that is with the MPPT charge controller back to the PWM, all right? So in case any of the solar panel is, seems to be uh, favoring any of the charge controller. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And then we'll definitely find out for ourselves if anything changes from the output results that we have pouring in right now. So guys, let's check it out. It's still 211 watts from the PWM charge controller and we have 520 watts coming from the MPPT charge controller. We have 212 watts coming from the PWM charge controller, and we have 520 watts coming from the MPPT charge controller. All right, so this is an output test for low light conditions for the MPPT and the PWM charge controller. As you can see, the PWM is giving 45.9 watts, while the MPPT is giving us 142 watts. Back again to the PWM, it's giving us 45.9 watts, and down again to the MPPT at 142 watts. Back to the PWM at 45.9 watts, back to the MPPT at 142 watts. You can see the intimidating lead that is coming from the MPPT charge controller. All right, so it's still at 45 watt, while the MPPT is still at 142 watt. All right, <laughs> it doesn't really matter what you do, okay? No matter what the configuration is, from series to parallel, the MPPT charge controller is still miles ahead of the PWM. There's a huge gap, a huge lacuna here. It's so amazing. So it doesn't really matter if you switch the solar panels and put the PWM to where MPPT used to be. It's still going to give you the same result. In fact, in my opinion, the MPPT charge controller gave the PWM charge controller, ouch, a black eye. <laughs> The MPPT charge controller does a better job when it comes to energy conversion and usage. All right, so that's very much we can do, everybody. If you haven't subscribed, come on. We're waiting for you to make you a part of this community. All right, so the moment you subscribe, you're definitely going to be the very first to be notified once we have fresh and brand new videos, which happens right here every single weekend. All right, thank you so very much. Don't forget to comment, don't forget to share, and do not forget to like. Thank you so very much for stopping by. See you guys in the next video.